Welcome to Macro Monday on Investec Focus Radio SA, a podcast about what's driving global and local markets. I'm Chris Holdsworth, Chief Investment Strategist at Investec Wealth and Investment. Every Monday morning, I'll update you on key developments from the past week and what you need to know about the week ahead. If you'd prefer to watch a video with the graphs and charts I referred to in the podcast, just go to investec.com forward slash Macro Monday. Good morning, it's quarter end. So instead of the usual weekly update, what we thought we'd do this week is give a brief summary of some of the key outputs of several investment committees that have met over the past week and a half. We'll look at the output of our Global Investment Strategy Group. That's a committee dedicated to coming up with the global risk score. How risk on or risk off should we be across the entire business? Then we'll have a look at some of the output of our Global Asset Allocation Committee, which looks at asset classes across the globe and implements the risk view of GISG, but in a more granular fashion. What should our allocation be, for example, to US equities versus European equities, US fixed income versus European fixed income? And then finally, we'll have a look at some of the output of our South African Asset Allocation Committee that takes into consideration our views on the globe, but incorporates our local considerations. Like, for example, where are interest rates going to go? How do we incorporate the elections next year? How do we incorporate the electricity situation? And GISG, which sits right at the top of our investment process, is made up of investment professionals sitting in our UK, Switzerland and SA offices. The Global Asset Allocation Committee similarly is made up of individuals sitting in our UK, Switzerland and SA offices, and then the South African Asset Allocation Committee is focused on SA. We're going to start off with the growth outlook. The consensus view at the moment is that the US economy is likely to grow by around 2% this year. We think that number is optimistic. We think it's likely to be a bit lower. We've spoken over the past couple of weeks about several indicators that suggest that the U.S. economy is likely to slow sooner rather than later. An example of an indicator like that is bankruptcies in the U.S. If you look at total bankruptcies in August, it was running at the highest number we've seen in August since 2009. So you compare all the August for each year. This year's August is extremely elevated relative to recent history. And there's a range of other indicators, too, suggesting that the U.S. is likely to slow. Where we agree with consensus is that the consensus forecast for next year is that the U.S. economy will grow by around 1%, which is roughly in line with what's expected in Europe and in Japan, which is a slowdown from this year. And again, there's likely to be a slowdown in China, too. So broadly speaking, over the next 12 to 18 months or so, there's likely to be a slowdown in economic growth. We need to bear that in the back of our mind when looking at markets. Real GDP growth is likely to slow over the coming 12 months, and inflation is likely to be lower over the next year than it was over the last year, which means that nominal GDP is going to be slowing as well. So in general, it's likely to be an environment where it's quite tough for markets. But that leads to a disconnect. The consensus forecast is for a slowdown in economic activity, but simultaneously the consensus forecast for earnings growth in the U.S., is very optimistic. The consensus forecast is that earnings growth next year will be around 10%, but we know when recessions typically occur, earnings growth on average is down 10%. So there's a sizable gap between what is currently forecast for consensus earnings forecast and what is implied through the consensus forecast for GDP. Now, that is by itself is a concern. But in addition to that, the U.S. equity market trades on a premium multiple relative to those extended earnings forecasts. The US is on a forward PE of around 20 or so. That's a 20% premium to normal. There's opportunity elsewhere in the globe, Europe, UK, South Africa, all trade at sizable discounts relative to normal. And in some of those cases, we're less concerned about the earnings forecast. So in net summary, amongst other reasons, this provides a justification for an underweight in U.S. equities. And given the weight of the U.S. in global equities, actually this implies an underweight in global equities. And that is our current position. There are a number of different ways of looking at valuation. We've got our own proprietary model, which suggests that the U.S. is trading at about a 50% premium to Europe, which is the highest that we've seen. But you can also look at forward PEs, EV, EBITDA, price to book, all of those measures suggest that the U.S. trades at a sizable premium relative to Europe and the rest of the globe, and that premium is close to the highest that we've seen in at least 15 years or so. We hope you're finding this podcast valuable. If you are, please take a moment to rate Investec Focus Radio SA on your podcast platform. And to make sure you don't miss an episode, please remember to follow us. There is some good news in the not-too-distant future. 
if you look at interest rates in the US, they're currently the highest relative to inflation that we've seen in 15 years. The US is running very restrictive monetary policy. Now that's unlikely to persist for very long. On the assumption that inflation remains behaved, we expect that rate cuts are not too far away, around six months or so in the US. And that should provide some support for global economic activity. So our concern is really limited to the next six to nine months or so from an economic perspective. Thereafter, we start to see rate, rate cuts and gradually that will provide some support for economic activity. It's a similar story in South Africa. We're running the most restrictive monetary policy that we've seen in 15 years. And given that we expect inflation will be well behaved in SA, more on that coming up, we see that there's limited reason to believe that the, the Saab won't be cutting within the next six to nine months or so, and that should provide support in the local market. With regards to our inflation outlook, we expect inflation will remain within the band until year end, getting to around about 5% or so by December. If that is the case, then it would be difficult to justify an interest rate of over 8%, which is the current situation in SA. So we have a non-consensus view here. We think it's likely to be the case that the Saab cuts even by year end. And if they don't cut by year end, we think it will be in Q1 next year. By the way, the market has very limited faith in the inflation outlook for South Africa. We can back out the market's expectation for inflation from the bond market. The market expects inflation in SA to get to around 7% within the next few years and then to drift up to around about 10% within the next 10 years. We think that's very unlikely. And as a result, we think there's opportunity in South African fixed income, which is just reflecting a very unrealistic inflation view in our view and is offering a significant margin of safety. With regards to the SA macro picture, most of the series that we look at are sitting in the wrong quadrant. That is data that is worse than normal and has been deteriorating. If you look at nominal GDP growth, retail sales, credit extension, they've all been very unimpressive. But inflation has been improving, and that implies that rate cuts are not too far away, and that will see those other parts of the economy improve and head to the right quadrant, in our view. So we're looking at what is likely to be a tough patch for the SA economy now, but an improvement within 12 months. Added to that, given the amount of solar equipment that South Africa has been importing, we think that solar alone is taking off about one and a half stages of load shedding per annum. And as a result, that we, we expect that we're going through the worst of the load shedding now. With regards to ESCOM, the energy availability factor at the moment is slightly higher than this time last year. The deterioration is, is slowing, um, but this is not the reason for us expecting reduced load shedding and reduced diesel costs for SA Inc. over the next 12 months. It's really because solar, we think, is going to come to the rescue. On the RAND, the RAND is materially weaker than our estimate of fair value. Even if we assume that South Africa is removed from a goer, our estimate of fair value is around 1750 or so, rather than the current 19. So we're not in any rush at the moment to increase our offshore allocation, especially not into a US market that's trading on a forward PE of around 20. So in brief summary, we do expect that the global economy is likely to go through a tough patch. We're worried about global earnings forecasts, specifically for the US. We think that the US is trading on a too elevated multiple relative to those earnings forecasts. So we're looking for opportunity outside of the US, but nonetheless, in aggregate, we're underweight global equities. We are overweight fixed income outside of South Africa as some form of insurance against an impending slowdown in economic activity. Within SA, we do see sizable opportunity. Our local market is cheap on a forward P of nine with a reasonable outlook for earnings. But our local fixed income market is even more attractive, we think, with yields well above inflation, well above peers. It is the case that we've got an election next year. And as a result, we'll probably find that Treasury and, and the budget in February is not as fiscally prudent as we would like. But nonetheless, the margin of safety in South African fixed income is so sufficiently large that we have remained overweight there. We are overweight SA Inc. too. We think reduced diesel costs and improving uh, volumes as a result of a cut to interest rates should be very supportive for earnings and for SA Inc. share prices. And that's where we're going to leave it for this week. That's all for this episode. Do you tune in next week for more investment insights from me, Chris Holdsworth, and the Investec Wealth and Investment team. If you haven't yet added us to your podcast feed, you can subscribe to Investec Focus Radio SA wherever you listen.
please take a minute to rate our podcast so we can surface this content to the broader investment community. If you want to see the graphs that are referenced in the podcast, you can watch a video version of this recording at investec.com forward slash macro Monday. The views expressed are those of the contributors at the time of publication and do not necessarily represent the views of Investec Wealth and Investment International and should not be taken as advice, guidance or recommendation. Investec Wealth and Investment International, a member of the JSC Equity, Equity Derivatives, Currency Derivatives, Bond Derivatives and Interest Rate Derivatives Markets, an authorized financial services provider and a registered credit provider.